of letting go. Let me know if you end up showing up live, put a hashtag live in the comments. And if you watch the replay, hashtag replay, just so that I know who is, who's coming from where. That would be so helpful. Okay, so I had very early in um, the month of sharing, I had somebody question when I was doing, remember my my beautiful artwork of the, the comfort zone and we have our goal and we reach out and grab it and then and then we re back, revert back to our old, old ways. And somebody asked me, how do you stop, how do you grow your comfort zone so you stop the yo-yoing with your goals? And I thought it was such a great question that I wanted to do a live class and share exactly how to do it and what the steps are and why we keep yo-yoing. And that's no fun. Like, show of hands, who loves to yo-yo with their goals, their weight, their finances? I just came from a finance class and found that like, yes, I will get my financial goals like this. And then I slide right back into my old comfortable financial status, except for it's not comfortable. It's not comfortable at all. I want to be financially free. And so if that's, that would be comfortable in my mind, if that is comfortable, why do we call it our comfort zone that we get stuck in? Good question, right? I'm going to share my screen. So bear with me for a moment while I figure out when. if you have attended probably any of the seminars for self-help and um, attain check getting your goals and things like that you're going to see something like this version here so here we are in our comfort zone this is our comfort zone that we live in we could also call this our reality this is our natural place of being and if you remember the very first day, day one, I said, if you do this one thing daily, it will change your life. You remember what it was? It's connecting with the one powerful emotion or feeling that you want to feel more of. Not what you wake up in the morning, you might feel stress or anxiety or, or depression or sad, whatever, or maybe anger is your homeostasis, not what has been, not where you are, but where you want to be. And as we start implementing it more, so maybe this feeling you want is comfort or peace or whatever. And then that's your goal is this is what I want to feel. And actually feeling it daily begins to make it automatic and repetition after repetition, repetition, repetition creates automatic automation. Okay. Then it becomes part of this. Okay. But right now we're going to talk about the comfort zone. We know that we're lacking here and there, there are pieces that things that we want that we don't have. That's why we set goals. This is, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to have this. I want to be able to be this. So we have these goals and they seem out of reach. They're out of our comfort zone. We also see this model with our A to B. Here's our comfort zone. And we have to move through the growth zone to get to where we want to be. And now if you have not been through my course, my self-hypnosis course, I absolutely suggest you do it so you can learn this unless you have already learned it somewhere else and that's fine too. Um, so I'm going to do the very fast version here. When we're on our way to where we want to be, there's also, we could call this our goal. We end up, oh, and I can't move this little guy. We hit a wall. Everybody understand that concept you feel like you hit a wall or you feel like you're that mario character back in the days when mario only went back and forth and you hit that wall but your wheels keep spinning you're you're walking but you're not moving anywhere because that wall's in front of you you guys feel like that yeah that wall we learn in lots of other places but i teach it in my class this wall is literally a part in your brain it's 
your reticular activating system, or it's our belief filter. Our, there's an actual piece in your brain that filters information coming in and blocks the things that don't pertain to you. So do you just throwing, since I just came from finance class, we'll just throw out a million dollars. You may want or think, yeah, million dollars. I could be really comfortable with a million dollars. But if you have a program here in your unconscious mind that says, I can't make more than $80,000 or $150,000 or $500,000, wherever your comfort zone is, whatever you're used to, that is where the rule goes. And you wanting a million dollars is just going to come in and your unconscious mind will bounce it out and say, no, that's a lie. We don't have that. Now, is it, is it really a lie? Could you get a, a million dollars? Absolutely. People do it all the time. The trick is believing it, allowing it to move through that filter. So it becomes a part of what you believe. Okay. So now that was just a real quick of what we want and what can be blocking it. Again, if you, if that is like, what, how, what is this wall? Reach out to me privately, DM me, and I can get you in touch with the, the, longer version, the information. I've got a YouTube video I can just share with you. Okay, so the question is, why do we keep yo-yoing and how do we stop it? So in my class, we talk about our comfort zone. We can, sometimes we will be so hungry for the goal and determined that we will go out of our comfort zone and we'll grab it. And then we go back into our comfort zone because that's our natural life. This is our re the way we see reality. And if we haven't changed in here, the goal can't come back in. It can't stay with us. It will kick it out. Eventually, your unconscious mind will kick it out. Where do we see this? We see this when people win the lottery and within a couple of years, they're back to their beginning financial state. We also see that, I'm going to pause while my connection is unstable. I apologize again. We also see that with weight loss goals. People will hit the pavement, they'll get a coach, they'll work with a partner, they'll do what they need to do. They get that weight loss goal so they can get into beach season or go to the wedding or the whatever on the cruise so that they look good for the moment. And then they relax back into their comfort zone and boing, the goal bounces back out. So what I was talking about in that first video is unless we grow what we're used to and comfortable so that it includes the, the goal, then it will bounce back out. That is just the way our brain works. Before I explain the comfort zone, let me show you another way. Here's you and here's your goal, but they are aligning at two different vibrations. If you want your goal of attaining a million dollars, but you're vibrating down here at a rate of 200,000, you're not in alignment with your goal. So that shows you're, you're not going to keep it. So this is just a normal scale. This is just like easy to understand. Of course, of course I, I feel so now, but what is this scale? What makes the vibration? What makes our comfort zone the comfort zone? in the first place. We have what is familiar to us. This is our normal life. We come home so it can be comfortable. I'm very comfortable in my home. I love my home. I love my husband. I love my family. I love my life. So I could very easily say, yes, I am in my comfort zone. In our comfort zone, we have things that are familiar. We have things that are our natural state of being. But now I have a question for you. Is it? 
my big question and what I've been thinking about over this last week is why is this the comfort zone if we live in so much pain? Because yes, things are familiar, but what if your familiar is pain, whether that's emotional or physical, our natural state of being can be very painful. It can be even damaging. We might be living with abuse. We might be living with scarcity. We might be living with the idea of danger all the time. So there are some very uncomfortable things in our comfort zone. I would love to, I haven't come up with a name yet, but I would love to change the name of comfort zone because really it's not all comfort. If it was all comfort, it would be our natural state of homeostasis that we crave. So really, this is, we have some truth. We also have some lies. This is, we live in our truth and lies zone. So we have the true things about us. We also have the lies we tell ourselves. And the lies are what keep it small. Now, to move into our growth zone, the growth zone is where we tell the truth. This is where we go in and we assess the lies that are in here and we move past it. We have the awareness that something's not quite right. You have this feeling. I'm not, I'm not in alignment. When you're not in alignment, you have that cognitive dissonance. I want this, but it feels wrong. You ever be, have you ever gone somewhere that should be nice, but have you ever heard of somebody that, um, okay, let me just tell you a story. I had a friend one time that I wanted to bring with me to church and something, I don't remember what exactly was happening, but something big was happening and I wanted them to be there with me. And I was like, oh, come, it's going to be great. And, and they said, oh, no. I can't go to church because the building would burn down. I would get struck by lightning and the whole thing would go up in flames. So they didn't come literally because that was their thought. And really, if we would unravel it and talk about, okay, why do you think that they would be uncomfortable in that setting with those people learning about the things that you do in church because they weren't living that lifestyle. They were in their own minds. Now, this isn't me judging them because this is them judging them. I knew that they're an amazing person and I wanted them to be with me, but they felt less than around the other people. And so they didn't want to be there. It was not a part of their comfort zone. Okay, so one thing... I hope nobody's offended by this, but it, I think it's hilarious. Just remember the media is only showing you part of the actual story. <laughs> I don't know when this was sent around or, or who, where I got it, but I thought it was so hilarious because that's so true. And it's not just the media. It's our reality. It's what's in our mind. We cut, we look outside of ourselves and we think a certain way, but we're not actually seeing a clear picture. And we get this from all kinds of places. Everything that is inside of us that makes you who you are and think the way you are has come from the outside. We have generational things that come down our family history line. And that actually, besides being in your mind because of stories that have been told, we have found that it's actually in our DNA. They, they've tested um, posterity of people who have survived the concentration camp. They passed down the anxiety and the, the blueprint of what's happening. And that's how we've stayed alive. That is such an amazing gift of our brain and, and human design so that if we experience a threat, we will then pass down that threat to our children. 
don't go in the water when it's rippling because there might be an alligator or something will harm you. Don't touch the stove. It's going to be hot. Um, so heat, that's, there are some primal things that we understand to be fears because of the generational knowledge. So that comes in. We have music, we have friends, we have social media, we have what we read. And all of it comes in and we get to choose to make sense of it or not. The things that align, and again, I know I'm moving very fast with this, but if you need more explanation on what all of this means, let me know in the comments or shoot me a private message and I'll get the right video out for you to learn. So as long as what we are bringing in connects with and validates what is already in our unconscious mind, we will accept it and believe it and see it. If it doesn't, our brain will just bounce it out. So as much as we might think, oh, that's really cool. I want that. If we think that's not what we can have or what we deserve or what can actually be in our lives, we'll still see it projected outside. Oh, that's for those people, not for me. And that can be good or bad. That, that's, that good and bad is so relative. You can think destruction or sadness or death. Oh, that's for other people. That doesn't happen to me or the reverse. I want to talk about a seed and this is going to, I promise it's going to come all back around. So just be patient with me. So here we have a seed, an acorn. Isn't it cute? I want to put little eyeballs on there. An acorn is actually a tree by design, right? The blueprint of everything that tree will or can become is already inside of this seed. So you could say, it's the natural or true nature or even comfort zone of this acorn to be the oak tree. But why isn't it? If that's the case, if the goal for this little seed is to become the oak tree, why isn't it an oak tree already? Well, look at this exterior. Before it can become before it can reach its goal, it has to move through this hard outer shell. Okay, think about that for a minute while I come back over here. So what do we have wrapped around our comfort zone, which really isn't our comfort zone. Now it's, it's the truth and lies zone. It's, it's the who we are, where we are. It's not who we are, it's where we are just where we are in our life. It doesn't mean we're going to stay there. It's just where we are and where we have been. And it has this hard outer shell. It's called the wall. It's called our reticular activating system. It's our belief filter and it's all inside your mind. So the reason you can't get what you want is because you keep hitting the hard outer shell of your brain before this seed can become it has to soften it has to let go what are we doing this month we're learning to let go this seed has to soften and let go of that hard exterior so that all of the elements everything all around can actually get into it Otherwise, it stays a seed. And if it keeps this hard exterior long enough, it will just be crushed. It's so small if it falls. There's nothing wrong with falling from the tree. That falling, and I'm going to share an interview from Amy Brook, is a colleague that just gives an a beautiful analogy with the with the tree and the seed and in regards to sexuality but we'll we'll get that down the road this month but for now i want you to realize and think about okay what in my head is rigid what in my body is rigid 
think about your body for a moment. Okay, I want you to think about your body and just close your eyes if you want to or feel where in your body is soft and where in your body is rigid. Now, I'm not talking about fat versus bone. I'm talking about tightness. Yesterday, we watched, um, I don't know, Mm -hmm. The name, the movie where the two girls went and climbed this ridiculous high tower and then they get stuck there. I'm watching this movie and I'm tense. I can feel my shoulders, my back, my stomach was so tense. And I was cuddling with my husband and I, and he, he could feel me like trying to climb climb with them my whole body was into it it was tense and I'm going Ugh. and he kept saying would you relax would you relax and I was like oh right right this isn't me this is a movie it's not my reality this is pretend and I had to remind my body and breathe into my body so it can relax anywhere in your body that's tense is because you don't have the breath you haven't allowed, you're tensing so tightly that the breath isn't moving in. So all you do is bring your awareness and your breath and move it through the tense places and allow them to soften and open. Why is that so important? Because when we are rigid, when we have this outer shell around us, our comfort zone, our reticular activating system, whatever you want to call it, we're not growing. Another thing I don't love about this model here is because it kind of gives you the idea or vision that this whole thing is balanced, that here we are in the middle of our life and we're balanced in smallness or we're, we're balanced in growth. But it's not that way. It's more like, and I didn't take time to do this, so you'll have to use your imagination. There are more rigid edges. Now, you might be kind of in the same state for, say, your relationships with people and time and what's another relationship um, with food. So you're all pretty balanced. And then over here on this side where you have a relationship with money, you might have a deficit. You might have money problems or you might be the opposite. Maybe you're really good at making money and that goes is stretched way out here, but you're not so good with people, with human interaction. So you have a deficit there. So really it'd be more like a stop sign, an octagon around us in all of these different relationships in life. And we push and we pull and we want to be where our goals are. Now, here's what I want to suggest out here where our goals are. Why do we even have goals? Why do we have things that we want? Why do we want more than what we already have? That simple because we're going off our internal state, our natural state, our homeostasis, and who we are on the inside is congruent with what we believe we can achieve. Now, you could ask yourself first, <laughs> because we do, sometimes we want things that aren't healthy for us. And that's not what I'm talking about. I was like, oh, I really would like some Oreos right now. Is that my natural state? No. So what you can do is question your goals. And that's, that's in the priorities exercise at the very beginning of my course. If you haven't done that, it's also free on YouTube to see. So that we can be really clear about what do I want? And if that's a priority, how am I showing up in life to get it? So these are the two questions that I ask myself if I'm trying to decide, is this goal congruent with who I am on the inside with my internal compass? The question is, is this going to help me move forward into being the most ideal version of myself? Is this going to help improve who I am? Is it going to help 
improve the lives of the people around me? And if the answer is yes for both of those, then it's most likely in your natural state. Ooh, ooh, thanks. I just popped into the um, chat. I like the zone of familiarity. That's what Jess says. Thank you, Jess. That is perfect. This is not your comfort zone. This is your zone of familiarity. I like that. Okay, maybe we'll, I'm not going to type it right now, but maybe I'll do that for later from now going forward. It's not a comfort zone. It's your zone of familiarity. What's familiar to you is not necessarily congruent with who you are. Why? Because we still have this hard shell keeping us from the growth of becoming who we naturally and truly are. We have layered layers and layers and layers of who we aren't on top of ourselves, mostly for safety, for coping, for all kinds of reasons, for because we think we need to be like that person that looks so cool in our mind, but that's not who we are. We put a layer or a mask of who we think other people want us to be. All kinds of reasons that we aren't actually living in the state of who we naturally are. We're not, we haven't become the tree yet. We're still small simply because we're trapped by our own walls within our mind. Each time you make a new choice that is in alignment with your future, you are priming your brain to install the neurological hardware to actually think, act, and feel like the person you want to be in your future. I love that. Thank you, Dr. Joe Dispenza. This spells it out perfectly. We have who we want to be. Maybe this is over here. And we have who we are. But what we need to recognize is that there's a mirror. We are already who we want to be. All we have to do is, what are we doing this month? We're letting go. We're letting go. All we have to do is let go of the outer shell, the rigidity, the lies that keep us from being congruent with what we want. I could make this, our goal is who we want to be. So we're here, who we are now, the seed part of us. And some of us have sprouted. Some of us still have that. Have you ever seen like the seedling pop up, but it's still holding onto the shell? <laughs> so some of us are in that state where, or we can also look at this like a butterfly in a cocoon. Like to get out of that cocoon takes a lot of muscle. And it's the, the um, pushing out of that shell, that hard outer shell that gives the butterfly the strength in the wings circulation so that it can actually fly. So there's nothing wrong with whatever state you're in. That's what I want to be really clear about. Whatever state you're in is exactly right for you because that's your starting point. Being really clear, having that awareness piece. Oh, wow. I do have places. I am maybe out of balance a little bit. I have places where, oops, I have places where I'm out here and I'm doing great. And then I also have deficits. My uh, familiarity zone or whatever, um, I've lost what she said already, um, is, is a little wonky. It's a little lopsided. That's all of us. That's, that's, what, that's what makes us shapely. But just having that awareness gives us the opportunity to, to see and feel the next time a trigger comes up, because I want you to see my eyes, this is important. So with all of the letting go techniques and ideas and things that I'm sharing, the whole purpose is to release, let go of the rigidity where it's keeping us from being who we naturally are, our or internal natural state of being. And that's beautiful and divine and light and love and all of the things. So think about the one thing that really takes you off the most, your pet peeves, your triggers, 
when you are triggered, when somebody squeezes the toothpaste from the middle or cuts you off in traffic or whatever that, that simple thing where somebody else, you know, somebody else just kind of laughs it off and whatever, but for you, oh man, it just gets under my skin or gets under my, whatever makes your skin crawl. That's a sign where you have rigidity. That's just, that's all it is. It's a sign. It's data to say, Ooh, see me over here, my left shoulder or my right shoulder, whatever, right here in my stomach. Do you feel that tightness? Something's not congruent with who I am on the inside. And that might be something that you're doing, or it might be a sign that this, I'm not in a safe place. I need to let go of this person. So it's not always you or the rigidity around your mind. It might be rigidity coming up because you need to remove yourself from a certain situation. Maybe you don't belong in the same place you used to feel comfortable. It's no longer comfortable because you've grown out past your comfort zone. Here we go. Now, how do we stop yo-yoing? That's the question of the day. We do it by expanding, growing, softening, so that we grow bigger and bigger. And as we grow, so does our zone of familiarity. And when we grow bigger and we don't grow where we're at, we feel cramped just like a baby does before it's born into the next state. The baby's fine until it gets cramped and it's like, get me out of here. We have to feel that pain. Pain is so important and beneficial. It tells you I'm ready to move on and not comfortable in this state anymore. And so you get a new state of mind, state of being, you get a new address, you get, you work at it and you grow until you are now truly comfortable with the goals that you want, with the person you want to be. Okay, now last story. I think I may have shared this already. I went to a, a surprise vacation. We fell into an opportunity to have a condo on the beach for a week. And this is a beautiful condo, two bedrooms right on the Gulf of Mexico overlooking it. It's probably at least a $750,000 condo. And I was looking around one evening and realizing I'm really comfortable here. I can imagine myself living in a home or a condo, definitely on the beach. I definitely am comfortable on the beach. However, three or four or five years ago, when I visited the same exact condo, I felt like this isn't or couldn't be mine. I didn't feel like I was congruent to own a place like that. I was uncomfortable with the idea that this could be mine. I could live here. So part of growing your stopping the yo-yo is recognizing that this is who I am. I deserve, I belong with this goal that I want, this person that I want to be. This is me. So think about now, think about your financial status, your weight, your, um, what you put into your body, your, your media, your food, your, what, what you bring in, what you surround yourself. Are you comfortable? Are you happy with what you have? Or do you feel like you're out of place? If you do feel like you're out of place, then it's time to ask more questions. Why do I feel like I'm out of place? Do I feel like I'm out of place because I deserve something more? I know who I am inside shows me I deserve something more. Or is it opposite? Are you feeling uncomfortable because you feel less than or unworthy of what is around you? And there's no right or wrong. Just 
understanding it will help you move into a place where you can do then do the work either let go of the lies that you you're undeserving so that then you surround yourself with the things that are you are deserving of oh, that doesn't that didn't flow quite right let me try it this way when you are congruent with who you are at your core it is natural to receive the things that you deserve it's as easy as that i wake up in the morning and i don't ever snort horse tranquilizers i don't it just isn't who i am i never have i don't even know what it feels like it's so unfamiliar to me and i'm guessing it's probably unfamiliar to you as well now i used to wake up and be very comfortable with moving into my meditation and, and yoga practice. And now I want to be comfortable there and I'm not. I have too much stuff in my mind that I still have to clear out and that was one of my goals. And so I saw very clearly, oh, I have yo-yoed. I've shrunk what I feel like I deserve, the time and effort that I need for my body has shifted and I need to grow that part of me so that I know that, oh, this is natural again. So there, there you have it in short. Think about what is natural to you and is that natural state of mind or being congruent with what you want or how you want to show up in life? And if not, do the work to let it go. Just because you're watching this, whether it's the replay or now, if you 